All right, so first off, we're going to find the exact value of this expression. We have the sine of 405 degrees. Well, first of all, we all know that 405 degrees is more than 360, so the first thing we want to find out is how much more. So we're going to subtract 360 from 405, and we get 45 degrees. So we have the sine of 360 plus another 45 degrees. Now, because trigonometric functions are periodic, which means they repeat each time you go around the circle, uh, we can go ahead and exclude this part and just go ahead and find the sine of 45 degrees. And looking on our unit circle, 45 degrees, the sine, the definition of sine on the unit circle is y, so the answer would be the square root of 2 over 2. Okay. Let's do another example. Let's do the sine of 9 pi over 4. This time, we can see that 9 divided by 4, if you divide those two numbers, you're going to get 2.25. 9 divided by 4 is 2.25. So what we have here is we have a sine of 2.25 pi. So we know that one time around a circle is 2 pi. So we're going to have the sine of 2 pi plus a fourth of a pi. Again, since the trigonometric functions are periodic, we can go ahead and remove that and find the sine of pi over 4 radians. And we are again at 45 degrees, pi over 4, and the sine again is squared 2 over 2. All right, the next topic, find the quadrant of an angle. So they tell us that the sine of the angle is greater than 0, and the cosine of theta is less than 0. So what quadrant is this angle located in? Well, if you remember by definition, the sine of theta on a unit circle represents the y coordinate. And we're looking for where y is greater than 0. So y is positive. So we're looking for where y is positive. The definition of cosine of theta on the unit circle is x. So we're looking for where x is less than 0. So we're looking for where x is negative. So where x is negative and y is positive. On our unit circle, if you're in the first quadrant, x is positive, y is positive. Second quadrant, negative positive. And I believe that's what we want here. We want to know where x is negative and where y is positive. So we are in quadrant. Two. And I spelled quadrant wrong. Okay, moving on. Okay, let's look at another example. Here we have the secant of theta is less than zero, the sine of theta is less than zero. I suggest you pause the video and try it for yourself. Well, the definition of secant is if we're on the unit circle, 1 over x. So in order for this to be less than 0, x would need to be negative. 
okay? And again, here we have y less than zero, so y is negative. So what quadrant are both our x and y negative? Check your unit circle if you do not know. Hopefully you have this memorized. Quadrant three. All right, next topic. Given the sine of theta and the cosine of theta, find all remaining trigonometric functions. Well, if you look here, you can go about it a couple ways. Um, first, you can look at this as y over r by definition, y uh, being negative 3 and r being 5. The negative would have to go on the top because the radius cannot be negative. And here you could look at the cosine of theta as being x over r. Well, to get the other trig functions, I'm just going to go ahead and apply the reciprocal definition. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. And basically, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So we have negative 5 thirds. The reciprocal of cosine is secant, and the reciprocal of four-fifths is five-fourths. Tangent, if you'll recall, the definition is y over x. So you can do this one of two ways. The easy way is take the y value, which is negative three, and put it over the x value, which is 4, and we get negative 3 fourths. Or you can take this whole value and multiply it by the reciprocal of this value. Because remember, the definition of tangent is y over x, so we could put the sine divided by the cosine, which would be negative 3 fifths times the reciprocal. 5 fourths and the fives cancel, giving us negative 3 fourths. So then cotangent is easy. Cotangent is the reciprocal function of tangent, so we have negative 4 thirds. Okay, next topic. Given a trigonometric ratio and information about the location of the angle, find the other trig functions. So here we're given the sine of theta is equal to 12 over 3, excuse me, 13. And we know that the angle is in quadrant 2. So the first thing you have to consider is in quadrant 2, x is negative, y is positive. That's important. Now, let's do the easy one first. Cosecant is going to be the reciprocal of sine. Okay, cosine. Well, to deter the definition of cosine is x over r. We are not on the unit circle. How do we know that? Well, the definition of sine is y over r. Notice y is 12, r is 13. The radius of this circle is 13 units. A unit circle is only one unit. So we know that y is equal to 12. We know r is equal to 13. We want to calculate x. So to do that, we use the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to, if I were to sketch this out, uh, we're in quadrant 2. So if you could picture the center of our circle here, uh, we have a radius of 13. We have a y coordinate of 12, and we're looking for this x value here. So what would we use to find x given this type of triangle? Correct, the Pythagorean theorem. So we would do x squared plus y squared equals 13 squared. Solving for x, we end up with 
when you take the square root of 25, we end up with 5. But notice, x has to be negative. So our x value will be negative 5. <coughs> Does that work? Uh, negative 5 squared is 25. 25 plus 144 is 169. So now we know x is negative 5. So we're going to put use our definition, negative 5, over our radius, which is 13. Do the reciprocal function. negative 13 fifths. Now we can do our tangent. y over x. y is 12. x is negative 5. Cotangent. Reciprocal. Negative 5 twelfths. Alright, here's your assignment for you to start working on. Page 400. 12 through 56, even problems. I hope you're having a nice weekend. See you on Monday.